Well, good day, everybody. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. If you can go to the chat window and type in where you're at, that would be great. That'll give me an idea as to where we are looking at chatting with today. Obviously, today is all about the subject of marketing. And, you know, uh, when I go back to my definition of marketing, which you're going to see in uh, our conversation here today, uh, the definition of how marketing comes together, I guess, is something that's of real importance. And, uh, oh, we're Turkey, we got uh, the UK, we got Boston, we're up in Canada, good to see, how you doing? Down to New Zealand, Ohio, we're across the planet today. This is kind of cool to go and see Guyana in the building, good to know. So we're literally every, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's a, quite a few countries we're hitting so far here today. As more people join us, obviously, keep typing in where you're at. Lewis, Scotland is in the building. There you go. Fantastic. Good to see. Um, so marketing, let's, let's start the discussion right there. What is marketing? How does it work? What is it? All that sort of thing. Now, the reason I start with that absolute fundamentals is saying, all right, what is the goal? And my goal here today is to help you understand how you can generate more leads by the end of this session here today. And I also want you to make sure you ask questions. And specifically, if you've got a question about how you can generate more leads in your business, okay? So if you've got a specific challenge or a specific marketing channel that uh, you're, you're struggling with right now for your business, please pop that into the chat window uh, or direct message me the question. I'm very happy to take questions at the end. And I really specifically would love specific marketing-based questions about your organization or your lead flow or what's happening for you in your particular business. Okay. So when we sit down and, and you talk about buying lifetime customers, you know, what, what is it? Well, that's really the essence of what business is, is marketing based. If we sit down and say, as a marketer, what is my job? My job is to buy customers. And okay, and what type of customers? Well, I want to buy lifetime customers. I don't want to buy single transaction customers. I want to buy customers who come back over and over and over again for a period of time. And so when we think about that and, and that buying of customers, obviously it leads us to the numbers question. And I've often said it, that marketing is maths. If the numbers work, then the marketing is good. If the numbers don't work, it doesn't matter how many creative awards I get, or it doesn't matter how much everyone loves the look of it. If I get a million people watch my video and no one makes a transaction, it's like, was it good marketing? So a million people that watch my video in India and I'm a small retail business in Las Vegas doesn't help me much. You know what I mean? And so we're really looking at this process of marketing and breaking it down into how do we buy customers? And, and that to me, friends, is really what I'm trying to push as somewhere where we can go to with this whole thing. So Let's start with the understanding of the two sides to that equation, okay, the math. We're going to, before we get into the, the strategy and all of that, let's understand the numbers side of it first, okay? So acquisition cost versus lifetime value or and lifetime value. The acquisition cost is the first and most important number. Now, if you've been around me for a while, you've seen this next formula, okay? And if you haven't, then jump on my YouTube channel and type in Brad Sugar's Five Ways. You will find me on YouTube all the time. Uh, and when you watch that Five Ways video, you'll understand this formula. Now, for those who've been around a while, your number of leads and your conversion rate determines the cost of acquisition, okay? So how much it costs to buy a lead and then what your conversion rate is determines the acquisition cost of a customer. Now, to give you the simplest way of, of thinking about that is I obviously want to have a lower acquisition cost, but I don't want to reduce my acquisition cost so much that I'm buying the wrong type of customer so that my conversion rate goes down. Let's imagine I'm buying a ton of leads for 10 cents a lead, but none of them are converting or only one in a million converts, then it's not a very good lead generation system. I need to buy them, 
and get them to connect with us. And then I need to convert them into customers. Now, the lifetime value is the other two points on that formula, how often they come back and how much they invest each time they're back with me. I will throw a little tangent in there on lifetime value. Uh, it also comes down to how many referrals you get from that person. So how often do they buy from me? How long are they going to stay with me? What's the average transaction value? And the fourth one that I like to throw in there is, well, are they going to give you referrals? Because someone who gives me referrals is obviously a much higher lifetime value than somebody who doesn't. So let's take that uh, one step further. Let's break down acquisition cost into two different levels. So to do this, I want you to first think about your initial transaction with a customer. So what is your initial customer's transaction? Now, where I first learned this, I had a dog food business at the time. My partner's in the dog food business, and I we were based in Melbourne, Australia, and that was called Trophy Dog Food. And our average sale to a brand new customer was $108, okay? Out of that, $38 was the profit on our first sale. So think this through for a second. I'm just going to grab a seat so I can... Uh, run you through these numbers uh, just a little bit. So uh, $108 was the first transaction value, 38 was profit. Now, if I could buy a customer for $20, so $20 out, $38 in, how many new customers can I afford to buy? This is not a complex thing. It's not a trick question. It's a very simple question. If you put out $1 and you get back $2, how many times will you want to put out $1? You will want to put the $1 out every single day. It's, it's not that complex. So what we talk about here on allowable acquisition costs, meaning you are buying the customer for less than the profit on your first sale. You're buying that customer for less than you make on that first transaction. Now, if you're doing that, technically you have an unlimited marketing budget. In the dog food business, for example, our radio advertising would buy us customers for $24.50. So for every $24.50 out, we got $38 back. Again, we wanted to be on radio a lot because $24.50 gave me $38. And that's not including their lifetime value. That's just the first sale. So if we take that into account now, can we with Google or Facebook advertising or YouTube advertising or any of these, can we know our exact cost of buying a customer? Yes, we know our exact costs of buying a lead, our exact costs of buying a customer. When we look at things like HubSpot and funnels and all of this sort of stuff, it gives us the exact numbers of what it's costing us to buy a customer. So we know when we can do it. And of course, then it's a matter of scaling that marketing. And we're going to get to that in a little while. Now, the flip side to that is what we call an investment acquisition cost. So again, I'll go back to my dog food business because this is where I first learned this strategy. We still use it today, obviously, in all of our businesses. But in, in that particular case, our newspaper advertising bought us a new customer for $54, okay? So at $54 out, so here we were putting out $54, and we only got $38 on the first sale. Now, here's a, it's, it's a trick question, but it's not really a trick question. Did we keep running the newspaper advertising with $54 going out and $38 coming back in? Did we keep running it? What's your vote? Thumbs up, thumbs down, no idea. <laughs> you know, the, most people are like thumbs down. No, you don't keep running it. Well, hang on a second. My first sale to them bought me $38 profit. My second sale, six weeks later, when we gave them their second delivery, and then every six weeks later, bought me another $38 profit. So 108 in total, but $38 profit. So I'm putting out $54. I get $38 back immediately. And then six weeks later, I get another 38. And six weeks later, I get another 38. So now my question to you is, if I'm putting out 54 and over three years getting $800 in profit, am I going to keep running 54 out and 800 in? Yes. Okay. So when we think about acquisition cost, there's allowable, meaning you're buying them for less than the profit on the first sale. And there's investment, which means I have to 
get at least one, two, three, four transactions in order to make that. Now, if we think of buying customers in this light, let's think of some big businesses and then we'll go back to some small businesses, okay? Coca-Cola. How does Coca-Cola buy customers? What did Coca-Cola used to do if they're marketing? Massive TV spend. What do you not see anymore with Coca-Cola? You don't see massive TV spend. At Christmas time, you see the bears. That's about it. Okay. What do you see with Coca-Cola? Well, they don't buy a single unit customer anymore. They buy a stadium. So they will sponsor a stadium or a hotel or a restaurant. You know it. You go to a hotel and they're either a Pepsi or a Coke. They, they, they're not, there's no in between. You're either drinking uh, Dasani water, which is, you know, the Coke water, or, or you're drinking the Pepsi water. I mean, it, it's, it's one or the other. So they don't buy a single customer anymore. They buy customers on mass type thing. Okay. They buy shelf space to buy customers. So big business does it on, on that end. You look at the telephone business. How does the telephone business work? Well, we'll buy a customer by giving you the phone and you will pay us off over a period of time type thing. You start thinking about how companies go out there and buy customers. What's something you've purchased lately? How did they buy you as a customer? What was their methodology of marketing that brought you on board? Maybe it was you did an online search and they spent a ton of money over the next 30 days doing follow me advertising. And over 30 days, you saw so many ads pop up that you eventually bought it. Maybe they're even smarter than that. And uh, for any of you that doesn't believe your telephone listens to you, uh, just trying to say, just try it this afternoon. Say, buy a boat four times in front of your phone. Turn, like the phone can be not even live. Like your phone is just sitting there. Say, buy a boat five times. I bet by the end of 24 hours, you will have boat advertising popping up on your Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and you name it, it'll be popping up there. So this is what we call, uh, when, when we're saying to people that they're buying customers, they're investing money to buy a customer. And that's the same for your business. Now, why do most small businesses fail? Well, most, and specifically new businesses, they spend all of the money they have allocated to open the store or build the office or do whatever it is they're doing. And you ask them, well, how much money have you allocated to buying customers and what's their answer? I haven't allocated any money to buying customers. What do you mean buying customers? I didn't know I needed to buy customers. What is that? What, I don't know. I, listen, I, bu I built the restaurant. Don't people just show up? I watched that movie. It said, build it and they will come. No, that's not what it's about. Marketing is not that, okay? So marketing is about buying customers. Now, we can. there's two types of strategies for that, okay? So there's the strategies that are the go out and buy customers, like running a Facebook ad or running a radio ad or advertising in a magazine or... And then there's the other style, which is the they find me marketing style. So building your website with enough content. So when they're searching, they find you type thing, creating enough opportunities for people to find you rather than you having to find them. So there's in the old push and pull style marketing. We're sitting here today with saying, OK, the cost of doing these is different. The cost of going and buying customers directly, you know, and if I just do some very basic numbers, if I spend a thousand on advertising and I buy 10 new customers at a hundred dollars a piece, well, that's where the budget goes. The budget goes into running the ads. Now, if on the other side of the equation, I'm building my website, I go and build my website and I create um, articles and I create uh, these sorts of things. Like I'll give you an example in my wife's business. She has a great business doing birthday parties for kids, like sleepover birthday parties for kids here in Las Vegas. So she needs to create content to do that. So rather than spending money on ads, she invests money in having content created videos, photographs, articles. Do you think that a mom here in Las Vegas that is looking to throw a birthday party for their kid types into Google something along the lines of 
best birthday party ideas for kids in Las Vegas. Yes. So she needs to create content. So some of your marketing budget today is the advertising, YouTube ads or LinkedIn ads. Some of your marketing budget is the wages to have people create the website or the content or the blogs or the videos or the, the webinars or whatever it is to give people a way to find you. So there's the two different methodologies. There's us hunting out there for people and finding them. And then there's them finding us. So your question then is, well, which is your favorite? Well, of course your favorite is they find you, all right? But that doesn't get us away from advertising budget because if they're trying to find me, okay, I want them to find me. Of course, I want as many articles as I can that suit what they're searching for, which we're not going to do Google Analytics and stuff today. But if I was to spend an hour on Google Analytics, we would go into how do we actually determine what articles to write and all of those sorts of things there. I'll give a shout out to Marcus Sheridan, his book, They Ask, You Answer. If any of you have not read that, I would highly suggest Marcus's book, They Ask, You Answer, as a great one for having people find you, okay? Now, let's flip that across and say, okay, people are searching for us. We haven't done a lot of content creation. Then, yes, we need to be on Google AdWords. Um, you know, I was with a group of 300 business owners the other day, and I asked them a question. And I'll even ask you guys this question. Out of 300 business owners, what percentage would you guess had actually built, and you can type in your guess if you want to, what percentage would you guess had actually built their free Google page, their Google My Business page? What would your guess be? What percentage had actually built their Google My Business page? Yeah, type in your answers or hold your fingers up as like a percentage, you know, 10 is 100 or 5 is 50. 25, 15, five, whoa, we got some who are really doubters. 50, 50, Kelly's, Kelly's uh, right there on the uh, generous side of the mark. Thanks, Kelly, for being the generous one of the group. Stuart, you're about on the right mark. Stuart's around the right mark, about 30%. One third of them had actually even done their Google My Business page. So we sit here and we think, how, how is it that businesses do this? Well, let, let's be very fundamentally basic. Do most business owners ever study marketing? No, they don't study marketing. They just don't. Why? They're busy being a, a plumber or a hairdresser or an accountant or doing the job of the business, not doing the marketing of the business. And that's why I hope today, uh, whether you're a seasoned marketer joining me just to get maybe an idea or two, or whether you're brand new to the world of uh, marketing your business, Either way, I hope I give you at least somewhat of your journey to turning you into a marketer. Hopefully, one day you'll realize I'm, I'm a marketer, not just a business person type thing. So we've got to get good at both sides, them finding us and us finding them. Okay, so they're the two sides to marketing that really build the machine. Obviously, the more we can have them find us is the better. Why is it better to have them find us and why is that a priority? Having them find us is a priority because if they're searching for it, they are in the market to buy soon, either immediately or in the very near future. If, if we're finding them, often it is a longer sales cycle because we're finding people and then convincing them to buy and then convincing them that we are the right ones, et cetera, if that makes sense. So... For those, and I, and I do notice as I scroll across the uh, attendees of the group, there are a few of you in the uh, Brad category of the gray head, no head group. And the gray head, no heads, the reason I bring you up is because you remember uh, Yellow Pages advertising. See, Yellow Pages was about them finding you. Classified ads was them finding you, okay? Now them finding you is the web, okay? So how many different ways do you have them find you? What search engines are they looking to find you on? Obviously, Google is the biggest, which includes YouTube, but let me put it, point out four things about them finding you, okay? Number one thing about them finding you is you need way more content than you think. You need a lot more content than you think to have them do it. Now, 
Uh, I mentioned Marcus Sheridan earlier. He talks about a statistic where currently between 70 and 80% of the purchase decision is made before someone connects with a potential supplier. So before someone buys from you, they have done their research and you all probably are the same. How many of you, when you go to buy something new, go online and look up 10, 20, 50, 100 pages and read information, watch some videos and do all of that stuff. So if you don't have more, well, let me go backwards. You need way more content than you think. And your content plan has to be reverse engineered. Your content plan isn't based upon what you think you should write. It should be based on Google, Google's analytics of what people are actually searching for. So what are people in your local market searching for when they go to buy your product or service? You need to write articles, create videos, eBooks, downloads, videos, you name it. They want to do that sort of thing. Again, I will give Marcus the shout out on that. He is the best on that subject with the book, They Ask, You Answer. Second thing I'll say around them finding you, okay? When it comes to them finding you, uh, advertising is good. I, too many people think, oh, I've just got to use search engine optimization. I've just got to use organic traffic. I've got to keep doing that. No. If I am searching for a thing to buy, the ads work as well as or sometimes better than the actual organic searches. So don't be afraid. Well, in fact, not don't be afraid. Be excited about using Google AdWords when people are searching for what you sell. If, for instance, you sell carpet and you sell carpet in Las Vegas and I search online buying carpet in Las Vegas and you do not have the organic reach to be number one, two or three on the page, you better be investing the money to be number one, two or three advertiser on the page. You don't have to be number one advertiser, but you have to be in the top three advertisers on that subject, okay? Third thing I'll say about them finding you, okay? You don't want everyone to find you. You want buyers to find you. You want your right target audience to find you. It's not about just being found for any particular subject. It's about buyers finding you. Now, what that then leads me to is thinking about the content you put out there. And I'll give you an example even from my own world. I was chatting with one of my coaches the other day. They have a new, a new management training program. So training business people how to be good managers in their own company or training managers within another company. So if you want people who buy management training to connect with you, you obviously need to put out information that they would be seeking. You don't want to put out generic business information and think, oh, people will buy my management training from generic stuff. No, you have to put out articles like the top seven things you should think about when buying management training. What does it say in there? Buy management training, top seven things. You know, ratings and reviews, best management training programs. These are the things that you want to be putting out there into the marketplace, okay? When you're asking people to find you. Final thing, and I think this one is of massive importance. When you're wanting people to find you, permanent is best. Permanent marketing is best. Now, what are things that are permanent marketing? A sign in front of your building is permanent. A YouTube video is permanent. A video on TikTok is gone. A tweet disappears in several hours. You want permanent. You want blogs, videos, uh, photographs, um, uh, ebooks. You want permanent, not one offs. So there's, in this day and age, I see way too much energy and attention going to things like Facebook or LinkedIn, where people are just, yeah, you spend all of that time putting up a Facebook post and it's gone. Within 48 hours, no one's going to see it again unless you comment on it again a few days later and it throws it back up in the cycle. But 
you know, you've got to make sure that permanent is your priority. Now, if we flip it over and say, all right, them finding us is one side of marketing. Us finding them is the other side of marketing. Now, here's a question for you. And again, it's not really a trick question, but it kind of is. If you, want a, if you want to scale a business, if you want to grow fast, can you rely on them finding you as your only marketing source? No, you cannot. Okay. If you want to grow fast, you need to do a lot of you finding them. Okay. You need to do a lot of marketing that interrupts their day, interrupts their life and says, hi, we're here. You might not know of us, but it's time to buy from us type thing. Okay. So them finding you is a percentage of the market, but to grow faster, you have to do a lot more of finding them. Now, that being said, if you do not have, if it is not easy for them to find you and you do not have them finding you as a priority, I would not be jumping to let me find them first. I would be dealing with them find me first before I dive into me find them. You know, for me, uh, Action Coach, it's a business franchise. If someone was typing in, uh, professional service franchise, they better find me. That is more important than me running an ad to find someone that may or may not be intrigued about becoming a business coach. So keep that one in mind. Permanent, them finding me, priority number one, okay? But for scale, we need priority number two. And so when we think about the numbers behind this, because this is where we're going to talk about a budget, okay? And building a budget as to, you know, how many do I buy is sort of the question of the day. So you got to run the ad, you've got to do all of the costs of handling it and doing commissions and all of those things. How much does each sale end up costing you is a question. Because the first question I want you to answer, and I think it's a most important question that, that you can answer in marketing is how many customers do you want to buy? Now, guess, by the way, guess what the number one answer I get when I ask business people, how many new customers do you want per week is? What do you think the number one answer I get is? By the way, it's also the dumbest answer that I get out there on the planet. It is the number one answer and the dumbest at the same time. I want, Brad, as many as I can get. No, no, you don't. No, no, that's not what we need to be thinking about. Yeah, I, I, and again, I go back to my dog food business because this is where I learned this strategy. If we every delivery van could handle 60 new customers per week, right? So a delivery van could handle 60 new customers. If I bought 250 new customers per week, I was going to put myself out of business. My customer service would be awful. Uh, I, I would get cancellations. I, all, does that make sense? I wanted to buy 60. I don't want to buy 20. I want to buy 60. So I needed to allocate a budget to buy the right number of customers for my business. I didn't want to buy too many and I didn't want to buy too few. So here's my first question to you. And I want you to type your answer in, gang. Don't just write your answer down. Type it in for me because I want it to become real on my side of the fence. How many new customers do you want per day or week or month? Write it in. Type it in for me. I want five per week or I want one per day or I want 100 per month or whatever your number is. How many? Now, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see Rick. Carmen, thank you. Keep typing them in, gang. Now, here's one thing. Actually, I'm going to teach you two things. Number one, if this was to happen month in, month out, could you still handle that many? If we did this every week, every day, every month, are you capable of handling that many? When will you implode? When will you need more staff? When will you need more budget? When will you need so that's why I ask you to sometimes rethink your answer to that question, because sometimes people give me too many, because that would work if you did that for one week or two weeks, 
But if you did it for 52 weeks straight, you'd be annihilated. You'd get, you know, you'd run out of money or run out of stuff or run out of product or run out of something. And you put yourself out of business by too many new customers. Okay. So the second thing I'm going to say is uh, something I learned from uh, watching TV, you know, watching TV every now and again, I'm a, I travel a lot. So I watch a lot of TV shows. I binge watch any other binge watchers out there. I'm a binge watcher, which by the way, any of you that have done my 30X programs, wave at me if you've done the 30X programs, the business or life or any of those, right? Uh, did you binge it though? Did you do it over 30 days or did you binge? Where are the ones who binged it? Come on, admit it. Uh, Ron, you binged. I know. Good, good. Um, halfway through. Good to see Grace. Excellent. I'm good. You know, I like it. For those who haven't done 30X, I'll show you what that is in just a little while. It's basically uh, me teaching you for 30 minutes a day, 30 days in a row stuff. Right now. So I, I watch TV. I've always watched uh, David Boreans. He was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He was uh, in Bones. And now he's on a TV show called um, Seal, Navy Seals. And there's a saying they have in it. One is, uh, sorry, two is one and one is none. And it's an interesting saying, but it goes back to a thing I, I learned in goal setting many, many moons ago. Never set a goal of one. Because if you set a goal of one and you miss it, you get zero. Always at the very minimum have a goal of two. Okay, so at the very minimum have a goal of two so that you, should you fail, you still get one. Okay, so that's, that's the, the simplest thing I can say there. All right. So now that we know that, all right, and it, it's not complex, the way we look at marketing is target offer copy, all right? So your target is really where you sit down and say, who are the customers I want to be buying? Who are the people I want to be targeting? Now you do this, you find this out in two ways, right? Number one way, look at your existing customer base. And when you go to your existing customer base, go through and say, okay, who are the best customers in my list? Who are the A's, the 20% that bring me 80% of my business? Who are the A-grade customers and what are their common traits? Like if you think of, okay, so I could sit here and say, okay, what's something I love about Al? What's something I love about Ron? What's something I love about Kelly and Olga? What is, what's a trait of yours that I love? They always show up. If I give something, they show up. They always respond. They always, they're happy to pay full price. Does that make sense? It describes your ideal customer. Who are those? But when you look at it, I'll give you an example. Um, one of my buddies who runs an insurance company, so he has a big insurance firm. And when he went and did the 80-20 rule, he found that his best customers by far, if you looked at his 20% of his customers that bought him 80% of his business, his best customers were real estate investors. So all the real estate investors were amazing customers for him. So when we looked at his marketing, by the way, how much marketing do you think he had for real estate investors? None. Now he'd gotten them, but he never targeted them, if that makes sense. So now we created marketing campaigns that targeted specifically to that exact group, to the real estate investors out there in the marketplace type thing. So what you want to do is think of targeting almost like a, a, a dartboard type thing. So if you think of it like a dartboard, now what the internal market will give you five to 10 target audiences to go after. These are the ones who make the best customers. That's what I'm going to have to. When you do the external direct, sorry, when you do the external uh, marketing examination, you do that market survey. Uh, some call it market research, some call it market statistics. But when you go and look at it, again, my friend who was in the insurance business, in his area, he went and looked at what are the businesses that are more prevalent in his area. There were a ton of medical businesses in his area. We went to his database. Guess what he had almost none of? No medical businesses as customers. And we're like, hang on, there's so many of them and you've got none we got to do different marketing and different sales techniques so that you get there. There's so many of them, you should be targeting them. So I want you to think of 20 target audiences that you should go after. And again, 
the tighter the group you go after, the better. So in his case, we didn't just go after medical businesses. We did specific campaigns just to dentists. We did specific campaigns just to chiropractors. There are, I don't know why there's a ton of chiropractors in his area. But so you get the more specific you get, the easier it is to go and do that. And I hope that makes sense for everybody. Again, if you've got any questions, gang, please type them in. And, and, and you know, that's, that's really what we're looking for is if you've got any questions around this stuff, I'm happy to answer those. Um, so where does that take us to? From the target audiences, okay, we want to ask question two. Once we know who they are, we want to ask, where will I find them in a high concentration? You know, I, I don't want to go and run newspaper ads if I can go to Google and target the 200 people directly, if that makes sense. You know, let's, let's be blunt. Right now, online, can you place an advertisement, a Facebook ad that goes to one person? Yes. Yes, you can. You can make your ad. Like, I could create an ad. Let's say I wanted to make sure Ron purchased something. Ron, can I make an ad that follows you everywhere online? Yes, I can. In fact, Ron, not only that, through GPS targeting, let's say you go to the airport and the airport has digital billboards, I can have digital billboards show an ad for Ron. Hey, Ron, you forgot to buy this. Like, literally, we can get that targeted today with our marketing. So you sit back and you start thinking, I need to be targeted. And I need to find them in a high concentration. Now, how many of you would like to, and you better get excited about this or else I'm not going to teach it. How many of you like to know the number one best strategy I've used in the history of time to hit targeted audiences and get massive numbers of sales? Would anyone like to know this? Say, yeah, wave, type, do something. Ron, that's not excited. I've seen you excited. That is not you excited. Come on, Eric, where's the excitement level here? Let's go, buddy. All right. Number one strategy. Uh, it's called a host beneficiary strategy, right? The host then is where what you do is you find someone that is non-competing to you that has the same or similar database to you. Where I first learned this strategy, okay, first time I ever learned it, was I was running my action coach business. I was teaching business. I met a guy, his name was Barry Gordon. Barry, I met him at the speakers, National Speakers Association meeting. They had brought Barry in to speak uh, to the meeting about what he looks for when he's hiring speakers because he, he was the marketing manager for the newspaper association, the newspaper group, local newspaper group in Brisbane. It was owned by News Limited, right? Big, big reach. At the end of the meeting, I asked Barry if I could take him to lunch someday. He said, absolutely, I'm happy to go to lunch. Great. When we're at lunch, I said, Barry, how many advertisers do you think you have at the newspaper group? He said, well, we have at least 35,000 that are on account, and we have probably hundreds of thousands more that pay direct. I said, fantastic, Barry. How many of them are business owners? He said, the vast majority, at least 80% are business owners. So, Barry, have you ever thought of giving them seminars on how to answer the phone, do all those things. Long story short, over the next two years, Barry put me in front of 288,000 business owners that were already on his database. They were his customers around all of Australia, all of New Zealand. In fact, I partnered also with More FM in New Zealand. The host beneficiary strategy is a strategy whereby someone who has a database endorses you to their database and sells you to their database. Now, how many people would you know or could you get to know that have your exact same target audience? Now, let me give you a modern day example of said strategy. Again, my wife's business doing birthday parties for kids. Do you think there are some mom influencers in Las Vegas, women who run big mom groups, who do social media mom stuff, who are heads of these school boards, all of that stuff? Do you think there are some? Yes, there are. 
Now they're already moms. So what do they already have? They already have kids. Are they already throwing birthday parties for their kids? Yes. Could my wife approach the top 50 of them and say, I would like to give you a birthday party for your kids on the condition that you give me a shout out on your social media and to all of your friends and you endorse me to the rest of the world. Is that okay? Of course, they say, yes, I want to throw a great party for my kid. They throw the party. They do the whole thing. Average free party my wife gives away. She gets 10 to 12 bookings for paid parties from one free one she gives away. So you think about it, she gives away one a week, she gets 10 to 12 paid ones from everyone she gives away. Hey presto, the host beneficiary strategy is by far and away the number one best strategy for massive customer acquisition. Uh, and it's not about one at a time, it's about getting lots of them at a time. And guess why? The newspaper group had spent how many millions of dollars and how many years and how many hundreds and thousands of human hours building those relationships with those customers that then led them to say, oh, we have this relationship with you. We want to endorse Brad. You should buy from him too. We had 288,000 people put in front of me, 1,800, sorry, 18,400 of them purchased a two-day weekend course, and of that, 1,400 purchased ongoing courses with us. Do you think we made a couple of dollars by giving away a free event? Yes, we did. It launched the whole business that sits now in 80-something countries around the world. So use it and use it well. Now, from the target, you got to create the offer, okay? Each target will require a different offer, though. So when you think about the offers, you got to think about it in a terms of who you're targeting. Now, in today's world, um, again, let's look at simple offers that, that we can make. The easiest way to think of offers today is simple downloadable stuff. The easiest way to think of offers is by, you know, and by the way, discounting is not something I will ever do. You can give someone a voucher for something or a free something, but don't ever discount, okay? That kills your business and only buys uh, cheap customers, to, to put it bluntly. So what we're going to do when we get to this is we're going to ask ourselves the next two questions. So the first was who and where in concentration. The third question is, what do they really want to buy? What's the end result? I was chatting with a lady yesterday who was talking to me about she struggles selling herself. And I said, well, you don't sell yourself. She said, but I'm a consultant. I sell myself. I said, no. What is it that they really want to buy? They don't buy you. They buy the result. So when you're creating an offer for someone, now, let me give you a, an example that I'm just going to make up right here on the spot. Imagine I wanted business owners who wanted better marketing results to contact me. People who are marketers that wanted better marketing results. Could I run a webinar called How to Build Better Marketing Results and get a bunch of people to raise their hand and say, hey, Brad, I'm here. Would their names be Carmen, Camille, Kelly, Ron, Al? Would that be their names when those people say, yes, I'm interested in marketing? Hey, presto. See, you've got to think of what they want. The end result is great marketing results. So I put on a webinar. No one wants a webinar. Everyone's sick and tired of webinars. Let's be blunt about that, you know, but they want the end result of what it is. So question four, why emotionally they want to buy it? Um, another example I'll use from my life, because, uh, you know, you all understand my business or, or you, if you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll help, help you out. But um, if I'm coaching a family owned business, like if I'm approaching business owners that are families and they, you know, multi, multi generation, do they want a different outcome from business coaching than say someone who's at a startup phase? Are their emotions entirely different? So I have to think that through when I'm creating my offer for those people. Step three then is to create the wording. Now, again, the target is so vitally important. The offer is massively important. The copy is still important, but nowhere near as important as the target and the offer. So how do I best communicate this to people? Okay, what do I do? How do I best communicate my offer to them? 
And in most cases, the communication methodology should be far more direct than most people make it. There's too much going massive scale rather than direct at those consumers. You know, even with say, uh, Google advertising. I don't want one Google ad that targets a massive group. I would rather do 100 Google ads that each targeted a much smaller group. Does that, does that make sense? Like if I'm, let's say I'm targeting business owners and I write a Google ad that targets business owners, that's just dumb. I really want a Google ad that targets uh, trades business owners does that make sense because they the picture is going to be different the language is going to be different the offer is going to be different the medical business owners i probably don't even want to just go medical i probably want to say okay how do i do this for doctors how do i do it for dentists how do i do it for surgeons how do i do it for and so on and so on and so on so i'm i'm really breaking it up and making my copy extraordinarily well targeted for that group okay so just a quick summary again, a reminder, all right? What we're trying to do here is buy lifetime customers. To do that, we wanna build a plan, okay? The plan starts with the analysis of the market, understanding that, knowing how many customers we wanna buy and what we need to do. We're analyzing the internal market, the external market. We're coming up with our target audiences. Now, when I say five, five-way strategies, you know my formula for five ways. If you've been around a while, if you're brand new, again, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, click the bell, make sure you get it all the time, but go through leads, conversion, transactions, average sale, and margins, all right? In the 30X business, those of you that have done that, know that we have the full handout there of all the strategies in the five ways, but go through and pick five in each one to build your marketing plan. Five strategies for leads, five strategies for conversion, five strategies for repeat, five for average sale, and five for margins. We're going to test and measure. Um, we don't have time to go into test and measure today, but just suffice to say that if you want to learn that, do 30x business. It goes into it in detail. We don't do marketing plans by section. We do it by a calendar. All of our marketing is planned on a calendar. You know, in Q1, we will do this, or January, we'll do that, or week one, we'll do this, and so on. We plan all of our marketing on a calendar, not on a section-by-section -section thing. And then finally, I work my budget. And budget is usually worked backwards. Okay, I want to buy 20 customers a week. My cost of buying a customer is $100. Yours will be different, obviously, but if you say, I want to buy 20 customers a week and you know your cost is $100 to buy a customer, you, you, you have to invest two grand or you just aren't getting enough customers. If you don't invest the money, you can't get the number of customers from it, okay? So no more complex than that. Now, uh, I did a whole webinar on this book. This is my new book. If you do not have it, please email or, or type in the chat window here and one of the team will make sure you get the link for it. Or go to, can we just put a link up for people to sign up and buy the book? I just released it in the UK. I have not released it in the US just yet. I will get you copies though, if you're in the US and you want it or wherever you are in the world. We just did the launch of it in the UK. We'll be doing the launch of it in the US early next year, okay? But, uh, and if you haven't done the webinar on Raise Your Hand, please again, go to my YouTube channel, Raise Your Hand. There's the link there. You can uh, do that. Um, hey, you're in the EU. You should be good. We can send it to you. It's in the UK right now. So those sorts of things. Um, in Las Vegas. Yeah, Eric, when we, we've got to get another box shipped here to Vegas. Uh, I literally don't have any more copies. So it's like, it's my book and I don't even have one copy of it. It's like, I keep giving them away. So I'm done. So anyway, that's, that's, that's the thing. Australia, I'm pretty sure, Kelly, we can get them to Australia. If you just ask Gona, she'll be able, Gona's nodding her head. So yes, there you go. Type, just uh, take, click the link and she'll be able to get it to you sort of thing. So, um, but if you haven't done that webinar, make sure you go back and review that webinar uh, as to take you through that stuff. Uh, the 30X challenges, I know some of you have done it. For those of you who haven't, we have three challenges. The 30-day life challenge to learn all the success principles. The 30-day wealth challenge to build the wealth plan. So building a life plan, building a wealth plan. I'll go and just put the support email in there if you need it. It's in the chat window. So uh, the challenge links. Thanks, Gona. There's the challenge links. If you haven't done the 30X wealth challenge and built your wealth, who has done the wealth one so far? I know a few of you have. 
excellent. So those who want to do it, join the Wealth Challenge, Life Challenge, and the 30X Business Challenge. 30 days to get a business plan, 30 days to get a life plan, and 30 days to get your wealth plan. It's a $1,000 program, but if you sign up, uh, because I love teaching this stuff, I do a, you pay for three days, you get 30 days. It's as simple as that. If you pay for three days, I'll give you 30 days um, because it's really the entry path and I want to teach. As you see, I'm charging a fortune for today's webinar. It's all of zero dollars. So obviously I must make my money somewhere else. So it, it's, it's funny, you know, I try and teach people, you know, I, I, I get paid to do the big speaking gigs and do all that stuff. They pay me a ton of money. It gives me, it affords me the ability to do these webinars and things for free. So uh, enjoy what you learn. Keep coming back and keep learning. If any of you have uh, finished uh, all three, then you've done the full 90 days. Congratulations. I love that. And I know some of you on here are on my university program. Uh, so the purpose, uh, the life purpose training, the entrepreneurs, how to buy, build and sell companies, scalability, how to massively scale a business and the landlord, how to invest in real estate. If you haven't done my university, make sure you do that. All right, question time. Either come off mute and wave at me and ask a question. I'm sure some of you have been around. There's a few of you that are perennial question askers, which I love. So any questions you got, dive in, type them in, wave at me, do whatever you want to do, and let's do the questions. Ron, you're usually my first with questions. What's your question? <laughs> oh, Rianne's typed it in. There you go. Oh, you got gifted. Rianne, someone bought you the 90 days? Fantastic. That's really cool. That's a Actually, there you go, everybody. Buy it for someone for Christmas. If you've done it already, Buy it for someone for Christmas. Al, you need to buy it for like 20 people. Good. Go and buy it for 20 people and give it to them for Christmas. Excellent plan. Eric, let's dive into your question. Um, doing paid ads, what systems are you using to manage your marketing and handle your retargeting? Uh, really great question, Eric. Uh, I use a system called the agency does it all for me. Um, so in in... My challenge, Eric, with this, and we, we did look into doing all of that sort of stuff, and we did look into managing all of it internally. And the problem was, once we got to a 1,000 ads, um, you know, it just became, it, it didn't matter what system we used. We just didn't have the human capital to do that sort of thing. And so um, we essentially handed that over. And it led, Eric, to a really big decision for us. And that was that we would handle in-house things that are relatively slow moving. Um, in other words, they don't change that often. And we would use agencies to handle everything that is ridiculously fast moving. In fact, the agency, uh, Eric, that we chose literally has uh, triple offices. So they have 24 hours a day coverage on our ads. There is someone 24 hours a day doing that. So um it's it's really important so sorry to answer it without really answering it eric but the the system uh, i could i guess gona could ask maybe gona you could ask lanny what system the agency uses to do that but um we we that's definitely the thing so yeah it's an answer without an answer sorry eric it's uh the, the way we do it is that way um what what criteria do you use to work out better host beneficiaries uh, than an okay host beneficiaries? Look, the the simple when we start with a host beneficiary strategy, what we first do is we sit down and we create a list, and I want a list of at least a hundred companies or organizations that I want. So what I generally try and do is come up with twenty different types of groups. Like, and again, I'll just stay with me uh, because that's, that's what I know. If I want accountants and attorneys and uh, 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 web agencies and IT companies, all B2B companies, right? They're the ones that I want. I will say, okay, who are the five best accounting firms that suit me? Now, the best way I can tell you this is to look at the culture of your organization and theirs. Will you get along as, as groups? Because it's got to be a win-win. They've got to win and you've got to win. And we found that's usually the best one where they get along well with us and we get along with them. Um, Brad, recent Action One to One member. Good day. Good to meet you, Tom. Party and holiday camp business. Similar to my wife's. Cool. 
Um, what is the best way she found to reach moms as they book? We'll test and measure, but has she found a specific great way? So uh, go backwards two steps, Tom. Don't try and find them as they book. Try and find them as they're having the idea of what to book. Okay, don't try and get them when it's too late. Once they've already decided I'm going to do X, then they haven't built the know, like, and trust factor with you. Because they're seeing um, articles from my wife around uh, how to throw a great birthday party for kids, uh, you know, the top ideas for birthday party games for, for kids, the top, because they're finding her with that information, they're finding her before they're contemplating booking. So it's not once they're ready to book, it's before they're ready to book is generally the best answer I can give you with that one. Um, Add data leads and retargeting is my system. Yeah, sorry, Eric. Yeah, just back to that one, Eric. Yeah, we they do all the retargeting for us as well. So um, going back to what you said about not just relying on SEO, does SEO play a role in attracting customers online? Yeah, SEO is massive. SEO is huge. Them finding me is massive, but I, I don't just rely on it because, you know, there's other ways to have them find me where I'm not going to be. If there's, let's imagine for a particular product or service, I have 50 ranking items, right? I have 50 search terms that I want to rank on or 50 searches that I want to rank on. Let's imagine I'm ranking on 20 of them. The other 30, I got to be running ads for. You know, so that's probably the best way I can answer that one for you, Grace. If anyone wants to come off mute and ask a live question, I'm also cool with that. Uh, interested in the Entrepreneur University. Belinda, fantastic. Uh, I'm sure one of the team will get you information for that. Um, go, there, look, Gern has already said hi, Belinda. Good to see. Look at you two chatting away there in the chat room. Always a good thing. Stuart, I want to scale, but I don't have the budget for the keywords I need. I've grown my business through network marketing, which is labor intensive. I need a second lead source scale of buying. Uh, I need a second lead source to scale. Is buying leads a good idea? Yes, buying leads is a very good idea, but also raising capital is a good idea. I see if a company has a great idea, they'll be able to raise capital. It's, it's no more complex than that. Um, but yes, buying leads is a very important strategy for growth. If you want to scale, you got to buy leads. It's, it's pretty simple that way. Um, have your core marketing philosophies changed dramatically since you started out or have they evolved with technology? Mm, philosophies have remained the same. Um, I definitely do a lot there's a lot more them finding us strategies today than there is us finding them. Back in the day, us them finding us was, you know, really yellow pages. It was only one strategy. Uh, it didn't exist any other strategies. It was, you know, you had actually you had classified advertising in the local newspaper and you had uh, uh, yellow pages, but that was it. Uh, I think some countries around the world had pink pages as well like they were doubly lucky they had two documents that you could use but i think that's probably the the biggest shift is there's a lot more focus of mind today on them finding us than there was back in the day um but and also i guess I, you know what michael actually i have to amend my previous statement i do a lot more farming marketing today than i did back then back then it was like hunt and kill um, it was like, you know, send a direct mail piece that someone purchased from directly. These days, we are a lot more farmers. We're very much more into know, like, and trust. Build a relationship with your prospect and have them get to know me over a period of time. And, and, and I think that's really important. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest shift in philosophy. A lot more farming today. Uh, because with the automated systems, with things like HubSpot and stuff like that, like you can literally see, oh, this person's looked at 30 pages on my website and read these 10 articles and all of the articles are around price. We know what's important to this person or this person's read 100 pages and they've gone to the price negotiator and they've done and they've done and they've done. Hey, presto, that means this person is more focused on, you know, so it gives you all of those things. I think in today's world also, um, you know, we've got to get better on our websites with, you know, simple things. I can go to, 
I literally, I sit there every day. And, and for those of you who follow me social media wise, you'll know I do the drive times, which I've gone as telling me I have to do one when I leave the building here. So guess what my drive time subject's gonna be today? Marketing, because I just left the building on marketing. Um, yeah, Kelly, enjoy, travel well, be well, good. Come back, see you next time. Uh, and Monica, yes, I see your hand raised. I'm gonna come to you in two seconds. Don't panic, don't panic, I'm coming. Um, but when I, I bought my Lamborghini online by building it off of the website, and there's too many companies today that don't allow you to do a price builder or some sort of thing on the website. So I know we're building one for Action Coach right now. People can, to buy their franchise, they can go in and do their business plan builder. Kind of fun, kind of cool. Okay, yes. Hi, Brad. Uh, just curious. Sorry, can you turn my sound up? Sorry, I'm in the studio. Hang on one second, Monica. I'm in the studio and I'd have the sound turned down so that I don't get feedback for the recording. Go for it. All right. So just out of curiosity, um, you know, there's lots of information about kind of the online being very crowded. Any ideas, um, not only SEOs and optimization, but hey, how do you Sorry, care Monica, my... Someone Bluetooth in on my speaker and is playing music over you all of a sudden. Gotta love that. Here in my TV studio and someone in the office is Bluetoothing into my studio. So let me see if I can. Joey, can I pull it back into the computer? Which one? All right. Ghana, you're going to have to repeat Monica's question for me. What did she ask? Hi. Hi, Brad. Is it good this time? Are we good? Yeah. Okay, awesome. My question is, well, you know, Joey's we, messed um, it up. It's Joey's fault, Monica. I'm throwing Joey under the bus. Joey, get in front of the camera so everyone can see Joey. This is the person who just messed up my sound, Monica. Yes, Ron, I'm shaking my head too on the inside. Joey, switch me out so that I can. That's okay. I'm willing to stay and answer questions, gang. I don't have anywhere to be, you know. <laughs> Try that now, Monica. All right. Should we? I got you. Yes. <laughs> now that you've awesome. repeated Thank the question you. seven times. <laughs> That's all right. Um, my question is, is, you know, online can seem very crowded, right? And everybody's trying to do that. How can you layer some of this when you're giving these different strategies? Any thoughts on, on how to layer it to, to get that optimization? So when you say crowded, give me an example. What's your space again? What what is what is it you're trying to attract? Who's the customer? I am a new action coach franchisee, Brad. <laughs> That's correct. But which target audience are you looking for? Who are you going for? Anyone in particular? Um, is it we're gonna go we're gonna go healthcare, um, ancillary service healthcare. Okay. So when you think about it, right? If I'm in healthcare, what do I type in when I'm searching? I don't type in generic business coach or generic how to grow my business. I type in how to grow my dentist business. I type in, you know, how to dentist business coach. So when you look at cutting through, it's easier to cut through when you're very targeted. It's harder to cut through when you're trying to be generic. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Great Any question. ideas of how to layer that with the advertising or networking? Is there any? Well, that, like yeah, so the advertising wise really comes back to what are you going to be offering sort of thing. And, and that comes back to, uh, and here's a real interesting one that actually I haven't been teaching much lately, but I probably should teach it a bit more. Use your social media as a test point for your advertising. So for example, if you offer an ebook and it blows up on your social media, then turn that into an ad and offer that ebook in your advertising type thing. If you do a post that gets say you do a video and it gets a lot of response, then use that. It's like this, this video here today. One of the funny things about these uh, webinars is people are like, oh, you do webinars and you don't have a lot of people on them. Well, here's the real interesting thing. I might get 20 or 50 people come to my webinar because we don't spend money trying to promote the webinars, right? But guess what will happen when we use the recording of this webinar now? How many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people per week, per month, per day will we promote the recording to and, and do that? So 
you know, you, you're just getting people to raise their hand. If you go back to the whole raise your hand philosophy, Monica, how many people do you want to raise their hand every day? Like where you said, you know, I want five new customers per X. How many conversations do you need? Boom. The other thing I'll say is, uh, and we do this, uh, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I bought a share of a, a marketing agency in the UK and um, we use a lot of ego marketing to target people, Monica. We, we do interviews of business owners and so therefore we are appealing to their ego, not just to their greed. So, you know, we'll interview them. So have a chat with the team at Avalanche, Monica, if you haven't already. And um, that's a good thing. Anyway, gang. Wonderful to have you here. I do need to buzz off and go and I actually have to record three more videos today. So and then I'll do a drive time. So I'll see you all on Facebook live in the next hour or so. Be well, take care. Thanks, everybody.